So let me first write a version of the statement of the main result. That we have set it yesterday. I'm going to do KSB and movie space. Give me a write of stable block radium surfaces. That means a finite toric cover. Okay, so it's a toric finite cover. So there's a toric variety with a finite subjective map to see the body space. So we'll first discuss some motivation and explain why this weather should be viewed as surprising in some sense. And the main reason is that this moduli space of stable lock club surfaces parameterized is actually a non torus object. So it's unclear where this torus on the moduli space should come from. So from this classical KSB moduli space, there is very much unclear why this thing should keep at all. And this thing was one well, is conjecture by through development in your symmetry. And was probably first articulated by Shankill around 2012, and was written in print as a conjecture in some paper of I can kill you. And there is a version of this, of this conjecture for log caliber varieties of any dimension. And what we are doing in this paper is bring this conjecture for the full conjecturing dimension to, to the first non trivial dimension. Okay, so I will start by saying a few words about log caliber surfaces to see what their non-toric nature is. So yesterday, we just gave some kind of uh, abstract definition of the log clavier surface of a pair consisting of a projective surface and give some anti-canonical divisor. And we'll always assume that these log cardio surfaces are so-called maximal, so this divisor is non-empty. Oh, OK, so t Yeah, that's no, so, so. so a case with surface is not allowed. So as I will mention, so you can think of this story as being some kind of um, story where it's some non-compact version of case, so this complement one way is D, some non-compact holomorphic syntactic with surface. But yeah, case three is not allowed. And actually, we want this thing to be singular. So we also do not allow the smooth. So for example, if you take P2, we don't allow a smooth cubing. But we allow the toric case, which is a triangle of lines. And we also allow non-toric thing, like the union of a conic and a line, or a nodal cubic. We allow all these uh, examples. But the statement, the statement doesn't hold when you assume it's not right? That's the point, or is like technique? Yeah, I think it's a general fact that we use mirror symmetry, and mirror symmetry behaves well like near some kind of maximal generation. And the singularity condition is a, is a version of that. So actually, I'm not sure there is a statement when D is smooth. And uh, and there was in the definition yeah, again last time there was this kind of condition of the singularity. So but there is a very concrete way to produce these surfaces by various geometry of surfaces, they all have so-called toric models, so you can produce all of them by the following recipe. You can start by something toric, y bar d bar, some projective toric surface where d bar is a toric boundary, so it's a union of it's a cycle of p1s. And so it could be p2 with three lines. And then one way to produce examples of such a thing is to pick smooth points on the boundary. And then you blow up these points. So when I blow up these points, I create exceptional divisors in the surface. So I get y tilde is blocked of y bar in this way, because we block smooth point, not toric fixed points, this thing is a non toric process. 
And we take for the tilde, the strict transform. Of the toric boundary. So we say the union of is the divisor here. And the claim is that simply by the way the canonical bundle behaves on the block, this pair where tilde the tilde is block labial. And they're almost the most general thing that you can get. To get all of them, if you have such what tilde the tilde, you can then contract some divisor of the tilde. And just look to the image surface, and you get the most clear on YD. So the most clear on YD is obtained from such Y tilde D tilde by contracting some components of D tilde. So I'm giving this description to see how much non toric is this kind of geometry. There's a basic invariant of such block canopy of YD, let me call it Q, which is sometimes called charge, which is a number of non toric blobs that you're making. And it is possible to show that it is the same thing as the topological Hollux characteristic of the complement Y minus T. At a purely a topological level, if you start with something toric, then the interior is just sister squared. So topologically, just like R2 cross T2, it's a trivial version of two tori. And when you do this process, you will get some surface yd where the complement y minus t now is a t2 fibration with q singular fibers. This thing is a t2 fibration. If you, if you only look at the non-compact part, you have the C-star square, but some more interesting non-compact holomorphic symplectic surface. And I will not go into any more details about that, but uh, if, for example, you care about some physics story, there is actually a physics interpretation of this deformation. Like usual, you have symmetry for toric threefold, there's some interpretation in terms of system of fast brains, so that to be string theory. It is non toric deformation in physics language has to do with introducing seven brains. So we'll not say more about that, but it's something which is natural from this point of view. But the thing are what local of surfaces are. And stable local adios surfaces, in the same way that stable curves are curved with extra mark points or an extra a divisor, a local, a stable local adios surface is such local adios surface YD. And an extra divisor, C, that we take inside some ampoule linear system, L ampoule divisor on Y. So my uh, stable local like, surface is really the data of y, t, and c. And we like to call to the modus space of the object, so modus space. So in this modus space, y can change. So remember, y is typically obtained by doing some block or some toy varieties. And so you can move the position of the point you block. So y can change that way. And uh, the curve C can move inside the linear system. These are the objects we are trying to parameterize. And uh, there is a reasonable modus space which is given by the general uh, case BA, the stability 
theory, which I actually have mentioned yesterday, is a generalization of the zero stable curves in a higher dimension. So when uh, she's saying, so the generic point is a modulus space with an object like that, but another one parameter family is the object can degenerate, and in the limit you'll get more singular objects. So in this, uh, more generally, the surface Y would break into various irreducible components. I draw just some rough picture like that. So Y first is irreducible surface, and the limit would break into many irreducible. In some ways, a smooth curve can break into a model curve with several components. And our curve C will also break into some curve, some union of pieces with the various irreducible components. And the non short part of the stability condition in this example reduces to the following claim that the stability is the following claim that C does not contain any zero dimensional stratum of D. Okay, so C is a valid object in your body space. If, for example, your curve moves in the linear system, and if at some point, if you take the naive limit, the curve goes through the zero dimensional point, this thing is not alone in the module space, and something more interesting happens. And you blow it off. Yeah, that's why you. Uh, so D will remain fixed, but yeah, typically your surface will, will break into pieces to, to avoid this phenomenon. In the same way that for curve, if you have a point going to a node, then you blow up, it's a new component. Okay. okay, the general survey guarantees that there is a nice compact module space of such a thing. And again, which is the kind of nice compact module space, and the main result type stated at the beginning where the claim is, it was the claim about this compact module space that up to a final cover it is toric. Yeah, that's also there's a question like what is exactly this final cover? Yeah. And uh, and like we could ask if it's really necessary or not. Mm -hmm. So if there's a way uh recipe works, but it produces something finite, and maybe there is some finite aspects which are like not really interesting. Like in this blow of points description, maybe you need to order these points oh, and these are naturally ordered. Oh. It's like one source of like small finances, but it should not be viewed as something really serious. So, so some comments of this module space. So what is its dimension? So you can move y, and y is obtained from some toric things by blowing up few points. I was blowing up points on the boundary. And for each of the points I blow up, I can move them on the boundary. So I get one parameter for each point I blow up. So I get, and that's basically all, right? Sorry, in the open case, that's basically all the deformation yeah, that you can have. That's right. So they are all the deformation of the log half your yeah, yeah. And actually, because I see star square acting on this toric thing, essentially the position of two of the points is irrelevant, which can be fixed by C star squared. So I feel I get two minus two. But then I have the choice of the curve in the linear system. So I have the like dimension of the linear system. So like if you are looking at the purely toric example, Q could be zero, and you would just get roughly the linear system. And the claim that this uh, toric means that, in particular, there is some kind of nice big torus in such a place. So the question is, where does this torus come from? And the first basic point is that, OK, for this part here, there is clearly a torus, because each of these points move in this C star. So this kind of moduli of y is kind of clearly of torus. The thing which is not obvious at all is y is a linear system. So, 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 it's good. Yeah, okay. But, okay. but the whole point is to find a torus, so that every point of the torus produces a stable thing. So you want uh, a claim in that this condition to not pass through the zero dimensional strata Electro torus inside your C's projective space. And the claim is that this statement is the 
on sure time. So in the purely toric situation, so usually if you have some disposable curve in the surface, you know, let's say in toric surface, then you you know you somehow you can specify it by what? So if I if, if you if you if you pin down where it's intersect the toric boundary, and then you need to pin G more points or something. Yeah. So like a point, you can you can make it pass through some points inside yeah. and, and give me given points on the boundary. That's kind of you, how you get a, something like a torus. Yeah, that's right. So actually, actually in the toric case, it's okay. maybe what you said, but maybe in an even simpler language, but curving the toric surface on the torus, it will be given by a Laurent polynomial. Just the sum of monomials. Some functional sister square, just some normal polynomial, which is saying some multi arrival. And it's simply true in the toric case that if all the coefficients are non zero, then indeed this curve does not contain any of the toric fixed points. What I was trying to say is that if you have, if you think like a Newton polytope of this yes, yes, thing, exactly. yes. and this is like saying, I want to meet the outside things, I want to meet the boundary in, in given points, and the interior things, I would say. Ah. Pass to some point. Yeah, that's why you mean when I do this block of here? No, no, not the block. Just the, the block. outside coefficient tell you where it's going to ah, be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So intersection with, for example, yeah, there is a correspondence in the side of the polygon and the toric divisor of the toric right here. And if you restrict that to this part thing, it's an equation of the restriction. So what I'm trying to argue there is that in the toric case, the fact that this thing is true is very much related to the fact that there's natural decomposition of a space of section into one-dimensional subspaces, which are spanned by these monomials, which I want to want correspondence with the integral point of the original polygon. Can you extend the period domain to the to this compactification? Yes. Sorry? So, for example, in Friedman notes, uh -huh. he, he does the period domain, right? The uh -huh. like yeah, 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 that's variation okay. of structure flow. Yeah. And that's basically given by the point where you are blowing up. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Can you yes. interpret it in the same comment? Yeah, that's right. So, so in the non toric situation, so if I have y, d, l, or 10 functions in toric by making some non toric block. Then if you think it with the block of the toric thing, then you can think to a curve here. So here the line bundle here will be the pullback of the toric line bundle minus some multiples of the exceptional divisor. And so the curve we care about are some curves here which intersect each EI in some AR points. So actually in the original toric picture, it's like looking to a particular curve in the toric in that system, which passes through the point you block at i times. It's like that. Basically, the condition downstairs. So, like concretely, the thing we really care about is linear system, some kind of sub space of the toric linear system, where you have this kind of this kind of condition at this point, on the curve you pass a i times through this point. And the fact that the fact that your module space is toric. At the end of the day, it's kind of very much related to the claim that in C space, there will be some nice basis, which is some kind of non toric generalization to the claim of linear system of some toric thing as a monium monomial basis, a basis from monomial. So, certainly, the object here in general will not be monomial because things we need to pass through some points. So, you could describe explicitly what it means. It means your lower polynomial needs to satisfy some. This is divisibility property on the edges. And the claim is that there will be a nice basis of this space. And some of my collaborators tried almost a full year to find an kind of elementary description of what's going on here, and they, they failed. So the only way we have currently to access this basis would be through a mirror symmetry story. So the claim would be this basis will consist of so called theta functions. And the claim is that this set of functions produce the correct torque. So the general element here will be a corresponding linear combination of these set of functions. 
And the claim will be that when CM live in a torus, it's like when they're all in C star, the corresponding curve indeed avoids the zero dimensional structure. And so some of the full, so there will be a full non trivial story involving mirror symmetry, enumerative geometry, chromophilia and vibes, whose goal is to produce this object. And we don't know a kind of, it's, it's not apparent that there should be a more elementary description of them. Okay, so it's really how the conjecture was formulated. So I guess there is some long story in New York Symmetry, maybe which goes back to Turing in the end of the 90s, which speculated that, okay, so it's, okay, it's not classically that for something like section of line bundles, I mean, write it as a usual thing called set of functions. And the same coming from your symmetry, the speculation that it should still be true if you replace your variant variety by any calabria. Which sounds surprising because for usual, usually for abelian variety, the set of functions seems to really rely on the group structure of abelian variety. Like in the toric case, what I would call set of functions are just the monomials, which again seems to rely on the group structure of the torus C star to the end. But uh, the more what the mirror symmetry would produce for us is some analog C set of functions, even if there is no, no obvious group around. So you could phrase the question in an almost elementary way, uh, but at times there is some like, basic difficulty to make it work. And the way we solve this difficulty is through some mirror story. So now we state one version of our uh, main theorem, which is some mirror correspondence, and then explain why it addresses this issue. So I claim that there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between, on one side, all the triples YDL we're considering, and up to deformation equivalent. Okay, so when I say deformation, I keep D, okay, D locally stays the same, like I don't smooth notes of D, D stays the same. But the thing is exactly, so for one point in this set, the corresponding case the angle this space. So this thing is like a, like a countable set of deformation equivalent classes of polarized log Calabian pairs. And so the claim is that there is a one to one correspondence with something else that I will denote x bar over delta, where delta will be some sort of formal disk. And this thing is a formal smoothing. of a degenerate cusp singularity. And I consider such object up to some appropriate notion that we describe of entry singular deformation. So I need to explain a number of things, but the claim that this thing is a of story, and I will view here the left hand side that being the B model side. But here we can see like module space that where you this case VM module space, which will be interpreted as a of a complex structure on this side. And this thing is where we will do the M model when the enumerative geometry uh, will happen. So on the left side, it's very natural to consider like some kind of complexified Jacobi. Uh -huh. support the zero place for, for that data. Yeah, that's right. So in the same way that in the toric situation, that's why we have this curve C, which is a kind of spectral curve, yeah. and the corresponding family of, yeah. of, uh, of Jacobian. So yeah, there will be some kind of integrable system yeah. over, over the thing, which, which uh, okay, does not play a role in all story, mm -hmm. but definitely should play a role if uh, you want to look at some bigger stuff. Right, but I was just asking, is there, ah. would there be any place for that data? Ah, here. Yeah. yeah, that's all. So, so here is usually something which is mysterious from the M model. Uh -huh. 
Okay, slacker. There's a lot of identity, something which should exist, but which is usually inside of some frame on the point of view. So, yeah, so, so in both cases, like, so we claim that, you know, this thing is a, it's really some kind of card or threefold. But in some physics language, if you rectify type 2a, you get some four dimensional thing, and there should be some subject written type integral system. And we claim the answer to which will be C1. But yeah, I don't know how free description of just in the same model language. Which is already oriented to the fact that maybe in complete reality, I don't really know how free even what the extended KLM module space should be. So actually, in this case, we can say what it is, which will be part of the quantum stuff. Right. Yeah, so definitely there is this integral system somewhere. It will not appear in our story, but it should definitely appear if you care about like further stories. So this is called something like Lojenga conjecture or something like that? Ah, okay. So this correspondence is, is, is not the Lojenga conjecture. So, so, so the Lojenga conjecture, in some sense, it is like this direction in a very special case, which is not the case we consider, but a limited case. Here I'm assuming L example. But if you don't assume L example, but it's only net, and if L is like, Restricted to D is trivial, then you can contract the device at D to a point and you get some surface with some cusp singularity. And the Loinger conjecture is a claim that if you have such local appearance surface with cusp singularity, it's kind of related to this X bar, actually, this X bar will be some smoothing of the dual cusp singularity. So here in what we're discussing, because L is ample, I will have a degenerate curve singularity. I will send one moment to what it is. It's not a curve singularity. So the curve story is a kind of limiting case. And the Loinger conjecture is about one direction. And what you are doing is really going back. So in particular, in the standard Loinger conjecture, there is nothing like set up functions. The kind of thing I was describing before, which is the heart of the matter. This thing is some kind of parentheses. Okay, so what is a degenerate cusp singularity? So it's almost like a cusp singularity, but actually it is simpler to describe. It is a non normal surface, it's, a, it's some affine. Normal surface, which looks roughly like that. So this thing are various irreducible components. And if you take the normalization, so the, in the normalization you split these various irreducible components. In the normalization, each of these varieties is some affine toric surface. So here. There is just some toric singularity, which, because we're in dimension two, is just a cyclic quotient singularity. So we have a bunch of cyclic quotient singularities here, and then you glue these things together so that here, yeah, you get this non-normal surface. There's a kind of bad singularity is here. So. And maybe I should mention, so what is the relation between the collections of the quotient singularities here? And the other side, so here we're looking to YDL. And in particular, we have the zero dimensional strut of D. And because YDL comes from blowing up something toric, actually each of these corners are also surface, toric surface singularities, they are also quotient cyclic singularities. And the relation between these cyclic quotient singularities is the one here. It's like toric duality. 
which has a cyclic quotient singer, it is, it is given by some fan, which is some cone. And you can take the dual cone and look at the corresponding cyclic quotient singer. So it's a little piece of the theory of story, which is just kind of the perpendiculars. Yes, that's why it's just, it's just draw perpendiculars. Exactly. Exactly. So we have this uh, surface that I will call maybe x bar zero. And here what happens is x bar, which is a one parameter smoothing of that. So this is the total space of that is a threefold. And inside the total space, so you have this x bar zero, this thing gets smooth to something. And in particular in the total space, there is a singularity, which is an example of canonical singularity. And so if you believe it's one to one correspondence, I can explain you how you get the fan, which will produce the toric variety dominating the KCM or this space. You look at this mirror geometry, x bar over delta. So this x bar, the total space is some threefold with a canonical singularity. And you can show that this canonical singularity always admits some clear point resolution of projective. Resolution and at the level of the five over zero, you would have this kind of vertex, which would be replaced by some normal crossing surface. Your resolve things. So upstairs, you will have some connections of smooth surfaces, and then attached to non-compact pieces. And under this map, all these compact surfaces get contracted to the, this point downstairs. And it's a general fact in variational geometry that each time you have a resolution of the canonical singularity, this thing is always an example of something called a relative moidrain space. So if variational geometry is as nice as possible, in particular, you can construct out of it some fan, which is for the Mori fan, inside the relative Picard group. Tonster. Where in this fan, I guess, as we have described yesterday, so there will be what the net cone, there will be the net cone of x, and the net cone of Every other projective Kerpont resolution, in general, this thing is not unique, but there are finitely many of them, which produces finitely many cones. And then you have extra cones called so called bogus cone, which could be reconstructed from the next cone. Okay, so the claim is that from the proportional geometry of the mirror, you can extract this Mori fan, and there is a way to coarsen this Mori fan into something called a secondary fan, so that we would call the secondary fan. In this context, so there is some explicit recipe to define it from the Mori fan that we described yesterday with not go through it. And the claim is that under this correspondence, the target variety attached to the secondary fan admits a finite cover to the case of the Mori space for our current wide here. So let me draw some picture, which is a picture which appears in the early days of your symmetry, but which is here is like one concrete realization of it. You can see that in a non toric context, is that if we look at this toric variety, I can draw it maybe something like that, via various torics, torus fixed point. So this thing would be a picture of A0 and 
by the end of my test via module space or through the theorem into the string variety with find the secondary fun. And for example, the torus fixed points have two different interpretations depending on which side of the mirror you are looking at. If you look on the B side, these torus fixed points correspond to maximal degeneration. So here you have your log calabria Y with some curve C. And when I go there, Y will break into pieces and will break in some kind of maximal way. It will break into a union of P2s. And my curve here will break into union of lines in the various P2s. Because there's a maximal Breaking out of the line bundle of one on P2 is like the smallest linear system on the log here. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of maximal configuration. And from the mirror point of view, I get one specific projective crepon resolution of X bar. Projective resolution. And in the same way that here you could get a picture of this thing by taking the kind of perpendicular of the picture of my idea, you get a picture of the central fiber x0 by taking the kind of dual of this triangle picture. So you can, and it's actually readable. But if I have some bunch of triangles like that, and if I take the kind of dual picture, I get the kind of picture like that, which would be some intersection complex picture of this x0 here. Okay, so in the theorem, I can do the one to one correspondence, but there's a much more refined statement that maximal degeneration on one side corresponds to the various projective group of resolution on the other side. And you can say something even more precise. You might ask, what does the fiber look over a general, like for any possible toric stratum, this is toric variety? So if I take, I ask what the, mod, what the limit of what idea looks like here, so on some toric stratum. So this toric stratum will correspond to the face of the net cone of X. Let's say this toric stratum contains this particular toric fixed point corresponding to this crepon resolution X. And then because it's a more dream space, there will be a corresponding birational contraction. So actually every possible toric stratum of this toric variety corresponds to the highest possible birational contraction from X to Z, so some Z. And here in this X bar, I say the total space is some kind of three dimensional space with a bad canonical singularity. X is some kind of smoothing, is a resolution, some kind of smoothing. And this Z is some kind of intermediate thing. And in this intermediate thing, typically you get finitely many bad canonical singularities, which are like less bad than this one. And if you look to an open neighborhood around each of them and look at their pre image in X, maybe I get something I call X prime. If I call this singularity I, I call this thing XI. And this neighborhood XI bar, I get some XI over XI bar, which I can think of as being an example of that this XI bar is like another X bar, but like less singular. So under the projection, it could correspond to some log club here. Which you perform to some y i t i l i, and the claim is that the general fiber here has a union of irreducible components, which are exactly the union of these y i t i l i. In other words, the correspondence we have is kind of it's not just any correspondence; it's like compatible. On the B side, if you do degeneration, you ask what are the components which appear. On the A side, there is some rational story. You can identify the pieces which appear, like from the correspondence, like applied to this smaller log labia. So if you have a split of all possible y ideas, and one y idea can break into smaller y idea, and our correspondence is compatible with that. It is kind of an inductive picture of what's going on of the correspondence. It's kind of essential to actually prove our theorem. So first, it's kind of induction structure of, of, of the two sides. 
And in particular, the proof that really the family will produce is a stable family, the inductive structure is one of the key points. Okay, so this thing is a kind of picture of the mirror story as well. And now I will answer. Is there some version of this story where you sort of, like what Lilo likes to do, take a toric variety and make it a, a part of some kind of periodic tail tonic of the plane with toric variety? Uh -huh. and then somehow you got the final final tail. Yeah, so maybe I should mention so. First of all, if our thing is toric to start with, yeah. then this picture is a known story. It's just a secondary fan story. Mm -hmm. and in its value, it proves that it gets the MOD space of toric variety corresponding to C secondary fan. And some of you think it's just usual toric mirror mm -hmm. symmetry. And indeed, there is a version of this story that was validated, like if you consider periodic findings, mm -hmm. which is about just the MOD space of like abelian mm -hmm. varieties. Yeah. And in this case, it is also. No, and so I guess there is a student of Shankill who actually wrote a paper about that. Mm -hmm. Saying that this periodic tiling, which describes the case the MOD space, can indeed be interpreted as a morifan of some mirror geometry. Mm -hmm. So, so it's 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 known. Uh, yeah, I don't know if everything you could think about is known, but uh, at least like the most basic situation, like what happens for again right is. You're right. I, what I'm trying to say is your theory is somehow can you easily upgrade your story when you're on your story variety. You're sort of speaking that picture is a part of something else. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, that's right. But yeah, I think this object X in dimension two do not seem to 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 exist. Like there would be some kind of compact apicale, and there is either a bit of variety where there is where everything is starting to start with, or it's like. K3 type story, but it's not really periodic. But uh, but yeah, like K3 type story. I don't really know something in in, in between. So. Yeah, precisely because there are not so many yeah compact holomorphic things like the things. Yeah, here we are working with like non compact thing, and there are a lot of produce that way, for example. But uh, yeah, that's. Fine. So the Abelian story only uses usual toricies. And, and the K3 story uses this kind of local ABL case, which are arranged in some kind of sphere pattern. And then there's a version of this story, which is some work announced a long time ago by Gross, I think, in Zebel, that they plan to say something of modulus space of power as K3. So this is using a kind of mirror picture. So some of the surfaces we care about here are the kind of thing which appear as pieces in the direction of K3. But some of them are more general because here I can have as many, like in particular this charge Q, which measures the non-toric nature. For K3, the sum of the charge at least goes up to 24 because K3 has no exactly 24. Whereas here, in our know, story, Q can be arbitrary and as big as you want. Yeah, it's a point. You know, there is no way to compactify that to some compact analysis. Okay, so I will end about, so I claim that there is a kind of basic mirror correspondence. And on the other side is x bar, and possible uh, preference resolution. And I will end by a few words about how do we actually get its correspondence, and, and where are the set of functions I was mentioning at the beginning, where do they appear? And so here it's something that uh, we already mentioned, but I will say a few words about it. So there, there is like two things to do. One thing is starting from here, how do I produce such a thing? And can I uh, come back? So let me call that one. Let me call that two. And for one, what we are using is some uh, explicit uh, construction that we call some stable mirror construction. And as we mentioned, like known techniques 
the previous mirror do not immediately apply in this situation. So what do I mean by known technique? So here, because we are outside the correct setup, by known technique, I mean saying like the gross debug program, which uses some innovative geometry input and from a written type information. In the territorial setting, you can do everything combinatorially, so you already find that everything is combinatorial. But this is non toric set of pure combinatorics do not seem enough. So we need extra information. And uh, so there are constructions. But usually, such construction applies to, let's say, one parameter family. Where the special fiber, let's say, is something normal crossing in a smooth total space. It's like the ideal case. And you know, one reason is because of some you know, technical aspect of chrome of width. So you want to define curve with contact order along some divisor. And the current technology is something that allows you to treat the head of a smooth space with a normal crossing the divisor. But the kind of families you want to work with, which are seen one from the family of log calabio with becoming maximally degenerate, the total space of these families will not be smooth. There will be singularities inside. And actually, our correspondence between log LBO and canonical singularity also works the other way. So if here I have this maximal degeneration corresponding to this projective resolution, the zero dimensional strata here correspond to irreducible components of X0, which are themselves log LBO. And the claim is that here in the total space, I will have canonical singularities, which are attached to this calabio through our correspondence. So what I claim our correspondence actually work both ways. So here in the total space, you get bad singularities. And so like usual enumerative geometry techniques to produce a mirror do not immediately apply. So we do some kind of more direct construction. And one of the point is, in our story, we think about C side as being the B side and this thing as being the A side. So we don't have to be really precise here. We don't really care about the particular complex structure of X over X bar. We only consider things up to deformations. And, uh, and essentially, we produce this thing by some kind of deformation here. So this is more direct construction type. So I will not go into the details. The point was that if you have something purely toric, you will know what to do. And our module case is obtained from something toric, but it's a blob operation. And the point is that to understand what this blob means on the other side, it corresponds to some non-toric smoothing of something uh, toric. So, so this x bar, so like in the purely toric setup, this x bar is a toric threefold singularity. And in general, this x bar is some kind of non toric deformation of this canonical toric threefold singularity. And then we cook up we have some recipe to produce it by some uh, deformation theory. So once you have these x and these x bar, you can cook up this secondary fan. And you can cook up this toric variety. Let me write m sec the corresponding toric variety. And our goal is to prove that this thing is a case BM or E space. So what we want to do is to construct something which will be the role of the universal family over this variety. And to do that, we'll apply mirror construction number two, starting from x over x bar, run some mirror story to produce this universal family. So step number two is like start here, and then run some mirror construction to produce some universal family of surfaces over 
this uh, torrid variety. And here, this mirror construction would be one based on enumerative geometry. So we we'll use some version of intrinsic cross-leverage mirror symmetry. And the point is that from this side, we can do it because x is the resolution is smooth. And x0, the special fiber, is really normal crossing. So it's like a nice situation. So x is smooth. This special fiber x0 is normal crossing. And so we can run this machine up to some details. Usually, x is a simple projective. Yes, this x is like at some non compact. This, so you need to be careful, but you can show that actually all the curves live in the compact piece, so it's kind of fine. So what 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 does this what does this machine do? So I start with this x over x bar, and I look. Let me look at the central fiber x zero, which is this normal crossing. Surface. And if I have such normal crossing surface, I can look at the dual intersection complex. So I can again draw the kind of curved picture that I view as some kind, of which uh, here is just some. Um, Some kind of abstract gluing of triangles. So let me call P is dual intersection complex, and I can consider the cone of a P. So I take this kind of abstract union of triangle, I put it at height one, and I take the cone over it. And in this picture, I have a natural notion of integral point. And I also have a notion of integral point in this code. And why I'm describing that is because what this mirror symmetry construction is producing is some algebra called algebra of theta functions, which is an algebra structure on a module. So we work over the monoid ring of the code of curves. So the spec of that is a toric variety corresponding to the net code. So it's really one affine chart of the toric variety we care about. So the spec of projects is algebra we live over what we want. And there will be one linear basis element called theta p for every integral point in this picture. So again, if everything were toric, this thing would just be a single usual cone, and integral point in this cone would just correspond to monomials in the corresponding toric variety. And the claim is that we can do the generalization of these monomials, which are the theta functions, so there's an algebra structure here. And the whole point is that this algebra structure is defined using enumerative geometry. So the structure constant. Of uh, this algebra are counts of let me say rational curves in X0, and at a technical level, they are so called punctured punctured log chromorphic invariants in the sense of Abramovic chain. And so in first approximation, they are like Gromov-Fujian invariants of this triple x relatively to this normal crossing divisor x0. Okay, so looking at curves inside this geometry, you cook up some algebra structure. And it is a main result of gross and zebra, but you get something meaningful. You get some associative algebra. And then if you just want to see a project of that, 
you get something which will be your mirror family. So if the family of surfaces we cover will be obtained as prod of this algebra of theta function. And the line bundle we care about will be the corresponding of one line bundle, which comes from the fact that we have a prod construction. And here we finally arrive at this point that I announced at the beginning that by construction, uh, the, line, the set of sections of this line bundle we have a basis indexed by this set of functions at level one in this code. If you replace this set of functions at other levels, they produce basis of sections of power of this line bundle. Okay, so let me just mention that and then I will stop the by construction. If I take the fiber of this family, and if I look to the space of sections of this line bundle, if I denote by yt the fiber of this family over this point and lt the fiber of this line bundle, this thing has a natural basis. given by this set of functions. And P is an integral point. Okay, so what I announced at the beginning, like where does the torus come from? Where does its natural basis come from? In our story, at the end of the day, it's really come from this mirror construction and from some enumerative geometry on the mirror. Now we can't take some chromophyton type Invariance to produce this object. So, as Ilya described, to actually make that work, there are a lot of work to do. Like the general mirror construction only produces some algebra with something formal, you need to prove some convergence property. And then you need to prove the stability property of the pair we produce, which crucially uses this inductive structure that I tried to draw about that. And so forth, the relation between the toric strata. Of the toy variety and the barrage of Jerry's X on X1. Okay, I will stop there.